Ted Markey in the Senate now more than ever. And here's why. Because he's a leader, he's a fighter, and he is a true progressive. Welcome back. Elizabeth Warren today throwing her, quote, full support behind her Senate counterpart, Ed Markey. The endorsement comes amid new reporting from The New York Times and Politico that Congressman Joe Kennedy III is considering a primary challenge next year against Markey. If that happens, the face-off between the 73-year-old long-serving lawmaker and the 38-year-old descendant of a political dynasty would be a very high-profile race and one that could mirror the generational divide that is playing out in the Democratic Party's presidential race. Stephanie Murray is the author of Politico's Massachusetts Playbook. She was the first to report on the potential primary matchup. She joins us from Boston, and Gabe, Zerlina, and Noah are back here with me. Well, Stephanie, let me start with you. Um, it would normally not be news that one Democratic senator endorses his or her a Democratic colleague for re-election, uh, but it's not every day that a member of the Kennedy dynasty is essentially uh, uh, out there publicly flirting with taking on that senator. Um, this Elizabeth Warren endorsement of Ed Markey today, what is it going to do to the possibility of this Joe Kennedy, Ed Markey uh, primary? Well, I think we're going to have to see... Um What's going to happen? Kennedy isn't in the race yet. Um, someone close to me, close to him, is telling me that he's going to weigh it over the next few weeks and make a decision. But I think Kennedy getting into the Senate primary could totally change the landscape of the race, and it would make a lot of folks in Massachusetts politics and in national Democratic politics choose sides. It, it's interesting. Uh, the, the question, and, and you remember, it was uh, Ted Kennedy running for president in 1980. It was tripped up by that Roger Mudd question. Why do you want to be president? I, I, the question is going to be asked to Joe Kennedy if he runs against Ed Markey, somebody with he's been in Washington for four decades on, on every sort of critical key litmus test Democratic Party issue. He's probably in alignment uh, with where the, the sort of the party uh, regulars are, where the party base is ideologically. Any any clue, any sense what the justification would be for Kennedy going after Markey? Well, it's going to have to be a generational argument if he does do it. Um, they align pretty closely on a lot of policy issues. They're both progressives. They're both Democrats. But what you have to look at here is Markey's age. He's 73 years old. If he were to win another term, he would be almost 80 by the time he's out of the Senate. And he would almost certainly retire. And then that would be a huge, a huge giant primary for an open Senate seat. And there's so much pent up political talent in Massachusetts that getting into this race and winning it would kind of let Kennedy kind of jump the line and get into the seat without a huge fight. We always ask this every time a new Kennedy emerges on the scene or one of the Kennedys decides to make potentially a move like this. But but the name Kennedy in Massachusetts, the mystique, the political magic, is it still there? Is it diminished? Where, where does it stand right now? Well, a few weeks ago, um, kind of in the middle of July, Kennedy did a poll. He put a poll out into the field testing him versus Markey in a Senate matchup, testing favorable lines, unfavorable lines. And a source clo uh, close to him told the Boston Globe that he was a little bit ahead of Markey in that poll. And for somebody who's not even running for Senate yet, I think a little bit of name recognition definitely put him over the top there. And bring the panel in. I'm, I'm curious about this. Serlina, what do you make of this? We talked so much. You just in the, in the last segment were saying Democrats are yeah. so focused on taking yeah. out Donald Trump. Massachusetts is not going to be in play in a general right. election, but a Kennedy going after a U.S. senator in a primary would be a big deal. Is there an appetite in the Democratic Party for that kind of fight next year? Well, I think there's, a, there's actually a dialogue going on in terms of whether or not you should primary a popular incumbent. That is a conversation that we've been having um, not just since 2018, but even before that, because you have a number of people. Um, Morgan Harper, who went to college with me at Tufts University in Boston, is running against an incumbent, Joyce Beatty, in Ohio's 3rd District, and that is controversial, right? So I think that there are some Democrats that are totally down for this. Um, you should be able to run uh, in a Democratic primary against an incumbent because that's e either going to push that incumbent to uh, the more progressive left end of the spectrum in terms of they're actually going to have to fight for it and they can't just be complacent. Um, but also it demonstrates the fact that a lot of these folks don't have any challengers for for a long, long time, especially in Congress, not necessarily in the Senate, obviously. Um, but I think that Democrats primarying other Democrats is something that we have to get used to. Otherwise, we're going to have people in Congress for four decades, which is longer than I've been alive, Steve. And, that, and, and perhaps some of the issues that are the most pressing and important to people who are my age, Ed Markey is not going to be able to relate to them. So I think this is good, and there needs to be a generational it's, shift it, at some point. It's, it's, it, I'm from Massachusetts, <laughs> and I grew up hearing stories about the Ed Markey 
1984 mm-hmm. Senate candidate. He'd been an eight-year member of the House in 84, ran for the Senate briefly, backed out, waited, got there 30 years later. But that, that generational component, Gabe, I mean, we do see that in the presidential race, too, 70-somethings against 30 something. Yeah, but not only that, we see it in Massachusetts. Uh, I'm old enough to remember the 2018 elections yeah. when Ayanna Presley made this exact argument exactly. against Capuano in Boston, where, which is where these guys are from, obviously, and then won. It was a generational argument, and that was a Democratic primary. We were having the same exact debate, and, and she won. She successfully won. That was a quite a progressive district. Listen, I think a lot of people in Massachusetts are fairly confident that Kennedy would win this if this actually became a one-on-one. They think that he would win basically anything he ran for because of the strength of that name in Massachusetts right now. Uh, obviously, we'll see how the contours of this race shape out if that does happen, but it's extremely telling that Markey went up with his Elizabeth Warren video today. She cut this, uh, not today. She didn't do this endorsement today. It was a few uh, days ago or weeks ago, I believe, that she did this for him. And so he's putting this out now, trying to do a show of force, trying to say to Kennedy, listen, I'm serious about running. I don't want this to, to be happening here. But you're right. This is a much broader argument that's happening in the Democratic Party. And it's just very interesting to see Elizabeth Warren, uh, who is trying to sort of be a generational change candidate, even though she is a little bit older in the presidential race, being used as sort of the defender of the establishment in Massachusetts shows a little bit of the divide that's happening there. But there are huge national implications here. Though, as you said, it's not as if Massachusetts is going to be in play in either the Senate race or in the president. But no, you're right. It, it, it does say, I think, a lot about the energy in the Democratic Party, as you say. And we, we showed this clip from Jill Biden earlier trying, you know, potentially to uh, uh, moderate that energy a little bit. It's trying to get uh, uh, folks in the Democratic base, in her view, to think pragmatically about the national race in 2020. We played that clip of her from New Hampshire earlier, basically telling Democrats, hey, you may not like a certain candidate, but if they have the best chance to win against Trump, you got to go with them. Here's a little bit more of what she had to say. This again, just a few hours ago. I know that not all of you are committed to my husband. um, And I respect that. But I want you to think about your candidate, his or her electability, and who's going to win this race. And so if you're looking at that, you've got to look at the polls. And, you know, a lot of times I say, oh, you know, polls... Excuse me, polls don't mean anything, polls don't mean anything. But if they're consistent and they're consistently saying the same thing, I think you can't dismiss that. I mean, you all deal with facts. No, I just wonder, as as a basic matter of political strategy, uh, to embrace the message of read the polls, my candidate's running better than any of the others against the one we want to be. Is that a, is that a good political so strategy? So I think it, it can land atonally to people like us who are used to campaigning and poetry and to sift through messaging for appeals to heart and emotion. But when you say the subtext out loud, it actually kind of works for you. I mean, the president has been doing that for the last four years. And it, it always jars us to hear him say, uh, you know, this is the message. You know, message, literally, I care. That's what he does. And it, and it really does work. It's effective communication. So I don't know if this is necessarily going to hurt. I don't want to overinflate its influence either, though. I, I don't suspect that this is going to be something we're going to be talking about in a month or two. Um, but briefly to the, uh, Elizabeth Warren's gamble here, I mean, this is essentially something that she's endorsing. That logic is that there is a hierarchy here. This is an institutional process that we have to uh, you know, abide by. I don't know how this party reconciles that message with also telling somebody who was the face of the party two years ago the response to the State of the Union that you actually have to wait your turn. All the lines are crossed here because you mentioned that uh, that uh, Capuano Presley uh, primary last year. Elizabeth Warren was neutral in that mm-hmm. one. She didn't have Capuano's back. I think Kennedy was actually for Capuano in that one, so he closed ring. Anyway, well, Stephanie Murray, this is a fascinating story. I could talk Massachusetts politics all day. Please keep covering it, and we'll have you back as it unfolds. Appreciate you joining us, and Gabe, Zerlina, Noah, thank you as well for being here. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.